This was uh, the largest study ever conducted uh, in the setting of HER2 positive breast cancer. This trial enrolled more than 8,300 women amongst 44 countries. Uh, so this was truly a global collaboration. You know, we and others have been involved in attempting to discover better ways to manage patients diagnosed uh, with breast cancer and other malignancies. One of the areas that we have been particularly interested in, in is HER2 positive uh, breast cancer. So following our uh, discovery in 2005 that trastuzumab was very efficacious, we realized that not all patients with early stage HER2 positive breast cancer were cured. So the reason to develop ALTO was to try to determine if adding a second anti-HER2 drug, lapatinib, could add to the benefit of uh, trastuzumab. ALTO was a collaborative uh, global study developed uh, with investigators here in North America as well as uh, many other parts of the world. And we had two principal investigators for this study, Dr. Martin Picard in Brussels and, and me here in North America. So I am a, one of the co-principal investigators of ALTO. There were three main findings from uh, the ALTO study, although there are many other findings that also will be of, of relevance. The three main findings can be divided as follows. In terms of the overall results of the study, then I'm going to talk about the overall outcome of patients in the study. And third, I'm going to talk about the implications of the study for breast cancer research in general. The significant findings of ALTO can be divided in three areas. Uh, number one, the results of the study per se. Number two, the overall patient outcome that we found. And number three, the global implications of the results of ALTO in the context of breast cancer research. So let's go over the first one. In terms of the overall results, our hypothesis was that lapatinib was going to add to the benefit of trastuzumab if given e either concurrently with trastuzumab or sequential with trastuzumab. Well, what we found is that lapatinib did not add to the benefit of trastuzumab. So we can conclude from that that trastuzumab for one year remains the standard of care anti her 2 treatment for patients with early stage her 2 positive breast cancer. Second is the understanding of how patients do overall. Well, what we found in ALTO is that patients did a lot better than we had anticipated, and we are very gratified by that finding. So in addition to patients with HER2 positive breast cancer doing better overall, we also found in ALTO that the risk of cardiac toxicity, even though most of the patients received anthracycline-based therapy, was exceedingly small. So we found that patients are doing better, and toxicity, at least from the trastuzumab uh, containing anti-HER2 treatment, is really much better than we had an anticipated or even seen in the past. Added to that is the fact that the cardiac toxicity we observed in ALTO was very low, providing us with additional reassurance related to the use of chemotherapy that includes anthracyclines along with anti-HER2 therapy for patient management. The third salient point derived from ALTO is that the results of the study now call into question whether we should be using pathological complete response as a surrogate marker for patient outcome in the adjuvant setting. Another aspect of ALTO in terms of overall implications is that we found that we need to question whether pathological complete response is really a surrogate for ultimate uh, patient outcome in the setting of HER2 positive breast cancer. In ALTO, we could not corroborate that the improvement in pathological complete response seen in NeoAlto when we administered the dual blockade with lapatinib trastuzumab correlated at all with ultimate patient outcome in terms of disease-free or overall survival uh, in the adjuvant setting. And this trial was successful in its conduct because of the collaboration between many investigators around the world as well as many patients who volunteered to participate. And it is good that at the ASCO meeting, we are reporting uh, the results of this study because they are applicable to science in general, but also very applicable to our patients today and in the future.